Hey there YouTube, Travis here, and today we're going to talk a little bit about chains. So this is a topic that I haven't really had a chance to talk a lot about, but I have a great opportunity to make a chain video today, because the chain on the MB5 is in serious need of replacement. And of course, even though the MB5 is not a moped, everything I show you today is applicable to vintage mopeds. Okay, so why do we replace the chain? You know, I found the kind of the, the reasoning behind it really interesting. Because, you know, a lot of the old timers will tell you, you know, if you don't replace a worn chain, it's going to wear down your sprockets quickly. And I kind of struggled to see that initially, especially when I first got into mopeds. Uh, because I figured, you know, if you have the chain tension set correctly, then what's the big deal? The classic test is you grab the chain, and then you're going to pull on the links in the rear, you want to see which ones are actually riding on the sprocket. And in my case, a lot of these are actually not. And so of course what this means is that, you know, if the links aren't grabbing down here that, well it's probably pulling pretty tight on the few teeth up here that it is grabbing which will allow uh, your sprocket to wear quite quickly. And of course I could make an entire video about sprockets and maybe someday I will, but you know, for now I just want to state that, you know, here's a new sprocket and you know, we can see that while it's a point, there is still a, a little plateau, a flat top at the part of it. This is a front sprocket for Tomos, which is still in its package. And again, we can, we can see that, that flat spot right there at the very top. You know, it's not being taken to a fine point and it's not looking like a chocolate chip or, or leaning one way to another. If you remember my pinball run video, if you've had a chance to see that, we were running a super tight chain and uh, that wore down our sprocket to some pretty dangerous uh, levels there. Okay, well enough talking, so let's get into how to replace moped chain. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, loosen up the axle nut. Uh, on most mopeds are going to have loose bearing rear wheels and so you'll have uh, the ability to start loosening from either side. I'm going to take off any side covers that might be in the way. Oh look, there's where our master link is hiding. Okay, now we're going to detension the wheel. Now on Pooks, similar to this MB5 actually, they use a lollipop style uh, adjuster for uh, the tension, which you just loosen a 10 millimeter nut back here. Uh, on, you know, every bike is a little different, you know, on, on Mobies they'll have a, you know, something that pushes against the wheel. Uh, on Italian bikes you'll have snail style adjusters where it's a, a process of, you know, loosening the axle nut and then rotating that you know, snail looking adjuster uh, pushed up against the stop. Uh, so anyway, detension those enough uh, to slide the wheel all the way forward to get it as loose as possible. And now we should be able to slide the wheel forward. Just like that. And as we can see our chain is very loose. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is remove this master link here. If you got a set of needle nose pliers, it's actually quite easy to do. Just like that. Which I probably should have moved this to an easier spot here. <laughs> Alrighty, there's our old chain. Alright, let's get at that new chain. So because we're working with the MB5 today, it's using a 420 chain. The majority of old mopeds out there are going to be using 415 chain, 415. Um, you know, I don't want that to be a blanket statement, of course. I mean, in the world of mopeds, there's all sorts of crazy stuff out there. So do your due diligence and your research uh, before you purchase a new chain. Okay, so because this is mopeds, you know, we're buying a generic chain with a certain length, and then we're going to size it based on what we need. Um, you know, there's a couple different ways you can do this. Some people will like to line up the two chains next to each other, line them up by links, not by length, because of course your older chain will have certainly stretched, uh, and you can go off of that. Um, I kind of just like to drape it around both sprockets and then uh, just kind of eyeball it from there. 
remember. Uh, it's very easy to remove links, but it's quite a different story to add links. You can ask any bicycle mechanic that. <laughs> Remember, it's always easier to remove links than to add them. So, of course, you know, make your first cut, you know, with the idea that, hey, you know, if it's got too much slack in it, I can always just take off the next two. So to break my chain, I like to use this chain breaker tool. This one is from Motion Pro. It's available from Treats, and it is amazing. Uh, this one is super nice, you know, pretty much you... You get your chain lined up and you make sure everything is absolutely dead on. That The pin is going to be pushing, uh, the pin from the breaker is going to be pushing the pins, you know, straight, perfect. You know, take some time to really get it lined up correctly or else you might break the pin on the chain breaker. Uh, you know, that's why the Motion Pro tool is great though, is that that pin is replaceable. You know, it's a process of, you know, you're going to feel some resistance initially. Remember the pin inside the chain is mushroomed on both ends. So you'll feel some resistance initially, it'll get easier as the pin moves through the middle and then some resist, light resistance again uh, towards the end as you're pushing the pin completely out. And I'll mention here also that you can absolutely do this without a chain breaker tool. You know, if you have a bench vise, you can put the chain in there to hold it steady. Then you can use a hammer and a punch to knock out individual pins. Um, you know, in my experience, that's that's just a, a royal pain. It is just just really just frustrating. And you know, I really, really like using the tool. You don't have to buy a fancy motorcycle chain breaker tool. Harbor Freight sells one which works just fine. So I'd also like to take a second and comment here that the best practice when you're installing a new chain is to also install new sprockets for front and rear. Uh, you know, the chain and the sprockets are absolutely made it together as far as their wear and that is truly the best and safest thing for you to do is replace both at the same time and I don't think anyone's going to argue with me right there. What I'm doing here today, uh, MB5 rear sprockets are actually especially difficult and hard to find. I hesitate to use the term rare because I'm not a fan of that, you know, seeing that in every Craigslist ad ever. but. These are hard to come by sprockets, and one of the reasons I'm changing the chain today uh, is to hopefully keep this original rear sprocket alive for as long as I can. So you can't just break one link at a time. You know, if you'll notice if I only took this first link off right here, it'll result in a open-ended section of the chain rather than, you know, two kind of the, you know, closed sections as we see now. So you have to break them two links at a time. Keep this in mind. Uh, as you're kind of figuring out how short you want your chain. All right, so let's see what that does for us here. So we're going to install the master link. Now one of the things I'll do here now is pull on the back wheel, uh, you know, about midway and, and kind of see where we're at. All right, so we'll need to take two more links off, but this is why I love doing the, you know, <laughs> you know, it's, it's sort of like measure twice, cut once. I'm just super careful with, uh, you know, making sure I don't take off too much chain and make extra work for myself here. Because even at its most maximum, we're still too loose. And this is how I like to start it, you know, especially because I'm going back for a second round right now with the pin barely sticking out so you can get it lined up with the edge of the pin on the chain. And then, you know, it's a matter of getting the chain in there, tightening it up, and then you're good to go. Okay, so here we are. I don't have the clip on the end of the master link yet, but I wanted to show you, you know, um, the previous setting with, you know, two additional pins made it far too loose. I removed the two pins. And then now, you know, we're about halfway adjusted here, and then this is uh, pretty decent. And once we start tightening down on the adjuster nuts, it'll be, uh, you know, right where we want it. Okay, and of course, you know, the direction of the master link does matter. Um, the closed end right here is going to follow the direction of travel of the chain. 
Uh, when in doubt, you know, you give your flywheel a couple spins and, and you can find out, but this is going to get bolted on here just like this. Alright, so we have our new chain fitted. It's just a matter now of pulling back on the wheel, tightening down on the adjusters until we have a straight chain and a straight wheel. Tightening down on the axle nuts, reinstalling any covers that are missing, and then from there you just got to go out and enjoy the ride. Alright, so I just got to throw those two side covers on and I am ready to go ride this thing around again. You know, changing your chain is kind of a no-brainer uh, when it needs to be done. You know, if it breaks, I mean, you risk messing up your leg really good and, you know, slightly less important. You know, you could really put a hole in your engine case. You might even lock up the rear wheel depending on the design of your bike. Um, it's important to check it regularly. All right there, YouTube. Well, I have it all back together. I'm going to go out and enjoy a quick ride here before I run out of daylight. Until next time.